Hello and a very good morning from Portugal's second largest city, Porto. I'm currently outside Porto Campania Station and about to begin my journey down to Faro on the Algarve. Our journey today will see us travelling with the Portuguese national operator Comboios de Portugal and will require us to take two trains. One from here to the capital Lisbon and then we'll have a quick change of train there before continuing south. Anyway, that's enough rambling on, let's check out the station and begin our journey. But before we do, don't forget to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Friday. Porto Campania originally opened in 1877 and is one of two main stations serving Portugal's second city, the other being the much more centrally located Sao Bento station. Upon entering the station you will be greeted by several staff ticket counters and note that you can also buy your tickets online as well. You'll also find a number of arrivals and departure boards here and our train, the 1038 to Lisbon, is currently set to depart on time so that's good news. You'll find a few vending machines dotted throughout the station as well as some shops down the opposite end of the building. And moving further on we find the platforms. Our train will be departing from platform 6 today. A subway is provided to move between the platforms. I guess now would be a good time to point out that the station features full step free access, with lifts provided between the underpass and each of the platforms. <coughs> The trains we're catching today are both Intercidades services. These are the second highest class of train in Portugal behind the Alpha Pendula, which you can find my review of in the top right corner of the screen now. The first service we're catching today is IC720 with a final destination of Lisboa Santa Apolonia, although we'll be alighting one stop before this at Lisboa Oriente. Our train arrives bang on time. This service originated in Braga which is about 40 minutes north of here. Today's train consists of a CP class 5600 electric locomotive with a mixed rake of co-rail and sawfame coaches. Intercidades trains have a top speed of 200 km an hour or 124 miles per hour and, as with most trains in Portugal, operate on Iberian gauge lines which at 1668mm or 5 foot 5 and 21 32s are much wider than the 1435mm or 4 foot 8 and a half of standard gauge. CP's co-rail coaches entered service in 1985 and were built under licence by Sawfame, although the interior is so similar to SNCF's unrefurbished co-rails that if I didn't know otherwise I would have thought I was in France. Oh by the way we'll be travelling in first class today which as you can see is laid out in a 2 plus 1 configuration. Before we set off let's take a look at what Coach 11 Seat 21 has to offer. Even for 6 foot 1 me I found legroom to be pretty good. On the back of the seat in front you'll find a little net for storing personal items. You'll also find a large, albeit flimsy, tray table. These even feature the proper cup holders that can also be found on the French co-rails, which I think is a nice touch. Affixed to the wall you'll find a small litter bin. The seats are just as comfortable as on the SNCF coaches which I can certainly say is a good thing. 
They're just like a big old armchair and I found I really just sank into them. Lastly, you'll also find a curtain and a personal reading light, which rounds off what I think is a really fantastic seat. Before we begin our journey south, I think it's time to just take a quick look at our route for today. Today we'll see us travelling south from Porto through to Lisbon, where we'll then change for a train to Faro. The journey is scheduled to take 6 hours and 57 minutes in total, travelling at speeds of up to 200 kilometres an hour. And we depart Porto Campania on time at 10.38. This leg through to Lisbon is scheduled to take 3 hours and 14 minutes. Shortly after departing Campania, we crossed the mighty Dura River. This river flows for some 897 kilometres or 557 miles from just east of Madrid to here in Porto. You can even take a train along part of the river and the scenery is nothing short of breathtaking. Be sure to check out my review of this in the top right corner, trust me you're not going to want to miss this one. Just to the south of Porto, we slow to a crawl as we encounter some track works. However, we don't incur any delays as a result of this due to the fact that CP's timetable reflected this hold up. Before too long, we've picked up some speed as we find ourselves alongside the rather picturesque and sandy shores of the Atlantic. Our first major calling point is Espino. While the city itself looks rather nice, it's served by this rather dingy underground station. About an hour after departing Porto, we arrive in Aveiro. Aviro is home to one end of the Lina de Volga, which is the last remaining metre gauge railway in Portugal. As we continue south across a sunny Portugal, here's just a bit of information about my Patreon page. Patrons gain access to most of my videos two weeks before everyone else, and best of all, without all those pesky ads. You can get this for as little as $1 per month. A link to my Patreon page can be found in the top right corner of the screen now, as well as in the description below. Coimbra B is our next notable stop. This is one of two main stations serving Portugal's fourth largest city, the other being the much more centrally located Coimbra A. The city is well known for its abundance of Roman architecture, including a well-preserved aqueduct. Right, time for a stretch of the old legs to go and see what the rest of this train has to offer. On most Intercidades services, you'll find first class in the front one and a half coaches. Behind first class, you'll find this rather nice cafe section. This has drinks and snacks available for purchase, but note that none of this is included in a Conforto ticket. 
I would show you the menu, but unfortunately this isn't listed on the CP site, but I can tell you that the range is fairly good and, in my experience at least, I found the prices to be pretty reasonable. Beyond the cafe car we find second class. As you would expect, this is laid out in a 2 plus 2 configuration. I found that both classes of travel consisted mainly of airline style seating, which, while great for solo travellers like me, might be something you want to bear in mind if you're planning on travelling in a larger group. Most of the Touristica carriages have a couple of bicycle spaces. Usage of these is free and, as far as I can tell at least, don't need to be reserved in advance. As far as luggage storage goes, the overhead racks are pretty spacious, with a pair of larger racks being located at either end of the saloon. Now of course, no classic local hall review is complete without paying a visit to the best window on the train. One last thing, unfortunately I didn't catch it on camera, but the back coach has space for a wheelchair user. Unfortunately Portugal's railways aren't very wheelchair friendly, um, this train doesn't even have an accessible toilet for example, so this is definitely an area for improvement. You'll find a pair of toilets situated in the vestibules at one end of each coach. I certainly had no complaints in terms of cleanliness, although it was disappointing to find that there was no soap, not even CP signature grotty bar of the stuff. Other than that though, everything was working as intended. Something that I failed to mention up to this point is that these trains do not feature plug sockets for charging tablets or mobile devices, so I was somewhat surprised to find that they were indeed Wi-Fi enabled. I couldn't get my usual speed test to work, but I would say it's not very fast as I couldn't even get a YouTube video to load at a reasonable resolution. One thing I will say, while somewhat dated, I still think the interior looks rather classy, although that's hardly surprising given it's a French design. As we approach Entroncamento, we pass the Portuguese National Railway Museum. I've put some photos from my visit here up on screen now. Um, entry costs just five euros, and with it being around 50 minutes away from Lisbon, it is well worth a visit if you ever find yourself in the vicinity. As we stop in Santarém, I'd just like to take a moment to point out the beautiful tiling that decorates the station building. This is a common feature for train stations in Portugal, and I don't know about you, but I love it. It's not too long after departing Santarém that we find ourselves fast on the approach to Lisbon. We pull into Lisboa Oriente on time at 13.53. We only have 10 minutes to make our connection here in Lisbon, but fortunately for us there's no rush as I've only got to walk the width of the platform to find our ride down to Faro. I should also give a quick mention to the somewhat unique canopy here at Lisboa Oriente. The structure was designed by celebrated Spanish architect Santiago Calatrava and was opened as part of the 1998 World's Fair. 
The leg down to Faro will be aboard one of the older Sorfe Modernidade coaches. These were originally built between 1967 and 1968 and were modernised, hence the Modernizada part of the name, in the early 1990s. These trains feature different seats to the co-rail coaches, so before we set off, let's just take a quick look at what they have to offer. Considering that this is a first class seat, I think that legroom is pretty awful. There's a fixed metal pouch which could be used for storing anything less than about 5cm in width. There's also a tray table, but good luck ever getting it to fold down. I mean, how hard would it have been to install a little groove or catch to help grip and pull it down? There's once again a bin affixed to the wall, and again a curtain and reading light are also provided. I mentioned earlier that these coaches were built by Saw fame, and Saw is exactly how you feel after spending any length of time in these seats. In my opinion, these are terrible, and one of the worst first class seats I've ever come across. Lastly, without sounding like a complete whinging wine bag, the interior is also not as nice as on the co-rail coaches. To me it looks very utilitarian and lacks any sort of class. We pull out of Lisboa Oriente on time at 14.02. The leg down to Faro is scheduled to take 3 hours and 33 minutes. As we make our way out of the Portuguese capital, we pass Aqueducto des Aquas Livres, which is this rather impressive 18th century aqueduct. A short while later, we cross Ponte de 25 Abril. The bridge carries the railway and the road 2,277 metres, or 7,470 feet, over the River Tagus below. It was built by the American Bridge Company and opened in 1966. Despite being built by a different company, it's often compared to San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge, and I think from this picture it's obvious to see why. And as we make our way off the bridge, we catch a quick view of Santiago de Cristo Rey, which, as you can probably tell, is based on the Christ the Redeemer statue in Rio de Janeiro. One thing that I will give to these sore frame coaches is that at least they have plug sockets, even if it did take me over 20 minutes to find them. Shortly after leaving Lisbon, I decide to grab a spot of lunch. Now you'll have to forgive me as I've lost my notes on exactly how much all this cost me, but I don't remember the price leaving me gasping for air and I seem to remember the quality being pretty good. With lunch out of the way, all that's left to do now is sit back and relax as we watch the vistas of Portugal roll on by. As pleasant as it is, there's really not a lot going on between Lisbon and Faro. It's just miles of countryside interrupted by the occasional small town or village. Eventually we arrive at Lole, which is our last stop before Faro, and only about 10 minutes from the end of our trip. Overall, I found the CP Intercidades experience to really be a tale of two halves. On the one hand, the co-rail coaches were amazing, with really comfortable seats and nice and stylish interiors, while on the other hand, these saw frame coaches are equipped with awful seats and rather naff interiors. However, one point I can't complain about at all is the price. 
I paid €45 Euros for my one-way first-class ticket, including the 25% discount I get for being aged under 25. Considering that this price is available on the day, I think that represents exceptional value for money, don't you? And if you purchase your tickets further in advance, this drops to €40 Euros for first class or €26.50 Euros for second class, and that's regardless of your age. So I found CP's Intercidades experience to be somewhat mixed, but I appreciate that this is just my opinion, so what did you make of it? Be sure to let me know in the comments. Ladies and gentlemen, next stop, the Faro, our final destination. We pull into Faro around 10 minutes late at about quarter to six in the evening, due to a number of small delays picked up throughout the trip. I do hope you enjoyed the video, if you did be sure to help us out by giving the video a like. If you're new to the channel then you're going to want to subscribe and enable notifications as I publish new trip reports every Friday. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next Friday!